Welcome everyone, it's the top of the hour, so we'll get started. I'd like to say welcome to today's GlomCon seminar. Today our talk is Atypical Anti-GBM Nephritis, and we are very excited to have our speaker, Dr. Lynn Cornell. Well, thanks everyone for having me. I'm talking about atypical anti-gumbrillar basin membrane nephritis today. So first, I'll start with a case. This is a 57-year-old man who had elevated serum creatinine, proteinuria, and hematuria. The medical history was significant for diabetes for eight years, but he had no retinopathy, um, so, and he also had hematuria, so they decided to do a kidney biopsy. Um, other laboratory results included the he had three grams per day proteinuria, microscopic hematuria. The serum creatinine was 3.5 milligrams per deciliter. Albumin was 2.9 grams per deciliter. Serum and urine protein electrophoresis and immunofixation studies were negative. And the ANA, ink, and TBM studies were all negative. So serology is basically negative. So here's the kidney biopsy. You can see some tubular injury here, as well as a little bit of interstitial inflammation, but not much chronicity in the tubular interstitial compartment. Now let's look closer at the glomeruli on this h &E stain section. Overall, they look hypercellular. On this PAS stain section, which outlines the glomerular basin membranes, you can see that there is endocapillary hypercellularity. So there are cells, within these glomerular capillary loops and um, enlarged endothelial cells. Here is a silver stain section and you can see some areas of glomerular basement membrane duplication. Now the immunofluorescence surprisingly shows linear glomerular basement membrane staining for IgG and lambda light chain and negative staining for kappa light chain. And you can also see up here, there was some focal linear tubular basement membrane staining for IgG. On electron microscopy, there are no immune complex type deposits. And you can also see some glomerular basement membrane duplication here that the arrow is pointing to. And in other areas, you can see subendothelial lucency. And again, no deposits. Also, no immune type deposits and no uh, monoclonal protein type deposits in the tubular basement membrane. So this case was signed out as glomerulopathy with chronic microangiopathic and endocapillary proliferative changes and linear glomerular basement membrane staining for IgG and lambda light chain with absence of electron dense deposits. So this is just a descriptive diagnosis and we'll get into later what this disease might actually be. So today, first I'm talking about typical anti-GBM disease. Uh, then serologic testing for anti-GBM antibodies. Then we'll move on to what we've termed atypical anti-GBM nephritis. And also what's new probably for everyone here is atypical anti-GBM nephritis in the kidney transplant. Now with typical anti-GBM disease, we see circulating antibodies against an antigen in the glomerular basement membrane. And this is what causes the disease. Clinically, patients present with acute kidney injury, hematuria, proteinuria, um, a number of patients can have pulmonary hemorrhage. Um, the percentage varies with the series. And the anti-GBM antibody production and the disease is very short-lived. So it's a really aggressive disease, but it's short-lived. The peak incidence of typical anti-GBM disease um, is in the third and the sixth to seventh decades of life with a bimodal age distribution. And this can occur in association with ANCA disease, especially in the older age groups. Uh, the incidence is about one case per million population per year in the US. The treatment involves plasmapheresis and immunosuppression. Um, if untreated, there's a poor renal survival, also poor patient survival, more than 90% death or dialysis. Poor prognostic factors include high creatinine at the time of diagnosis and anuria at presentation. Uh, 
Um, in, on my kitchen.